Well, this morning we are going to be in Acts chapter 11. Uh, we're going to uh, skip over 10 because 10 uh, is an encounter where um, uh, Peter is called to go and reach Cornelius. And Acts chapter 11 is basically a summation of that same event. So we're going to use chapter 11 today in a sermon I've entitled Camp Questions or Questions from Camp. And uh, as most of you guys know, last week I spent the week with, with uh, our senior high students at Camp Bentley. And it was a tremendous experience. Uh, but to be honest with you, going into it, uh, there was just all kinds of stress. Um, I had to write nine messages to preach consecutively thereafter. I preach here and then prepare for this Sunday. So this is like my 11th message in seven days. So um, it, it was quite a task, but um, after I got through all of the feeling sorry for myself and, and all the work that I had to do, um, I got to experience the tremendous blessings being there. And there were so many cool things that happened while, while I was there. Um, whether it was uh, uh, one that really sticks out to me was uh, one night they had a skit night. And uh, these guys, uh, I don't know, there's probably five or six of them, they, uh, they come up with a skit of this game show. And it's like a dating game show. And one of the guys dressed up like a girl, and she was the one that was going to pick from these three guys. And uh, the first couple of guys, they were, they were kind of funny, but the, the last guy, he was from Powers Lake, supposedly. And, uh, and if you would have closed your eyes and just listened, you would have thought you were hearing John Colston. <laughs> he, just, he just nailed it. <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, and, the, and all the kids from Powers Lake were laughing. They're like, it's true. It's true. Um, <laughs> but then there was, uh, then there was uh, uh, watching the kids interact with one another, um, seeing, uh, or just being amazed by what some of them really did know about the scriptures. There's this one girl, uh, her name was Carly. And she just knew the Bible, uh, just backwards and forwards. Anytime there was like a trivia question, she had it. If there was a question in a small group, uh, she had it. It was just amazing. Um, and then watching some of the more teenager type stuff. Um, is this little guy named Patrick that just followed the great tour around the lost <laughs> But I think probably the most memorable thing was some of the questions that came out of camp. And these kids, they're just brutally honest and just ask some tremendous questions. Uh, questions that uh, I think sometimes us as adults, we don't ask because we think it's wrong to ask these questions. Uh, questions like, uh, one kid who was, who was my skeptic of the week and he loved interacting with him. He's, he's not sure about this whole Christianity thing. So how can you embrace this idea of Christianity without walking into it like a mindless limit? You know, that's an antagonistic question, but it's a legitimate question. And we got the chance to try to answer that. And we had this great opportunity to take them from pillar to post, from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, laying out the plan of God for them. And to watch them as the plan of God was revealed to them, how the, the creation was designed for them, and how it was, it's to draw us into fellowship with God, and, and how their sin, personally, not just Adam and Eve's, but their sin separates them from God, and them really come into grips with who they are before just and holy God. And then them understanding the sacrifice that took place on their behalf uh, and, and the torture that Jesus went through it was awesome to, to see them just kind of maybe get it for the first time. And then seeing their willingness to respond. Um, they're like, if 
this is if this is the truth, if this is the scripture, then we just can't be the same again. And uh, that was just awesome to see. But those questions, those many questions, um, just kind of stuck with me. And um, it made me think about the text that I'm going to preach about today in Acts 11, because many of the same questions that they were asking are the same questions that Peter was asking in his day. So I want to open this up. I want to read this to you. And then we're going to get into uh, basically three questions that Peter asked and that a youth asked. And I think the questions that you and I need to ask and find answers to. And those three questions are these. How far is too far? How do I know when, when God is calling me somewhere or to someone? And then the final one is, how should I respond to God's call? As I said, I want us to work through those three questions um, that, I, that I mentioned earlier. And these are three questions that we spent some time on the last day that we were at camp. The last session that we met with the kids, we just had this, this amazing panel discussion which really freaked out all of the counselors because I didn't tell them until the night before that we were going to do it. But what we did was we, we sat chairs all across the, the, the stage in front, and then all the kids were out front, and they could ask any question, any question that had concern. It was no one's part. We got some, some really difficult things. The, the first question was a really personal one about a hurt that had happened to a young girl. And, uh, you know, it was a... It was a difficult way to start, but uh, we got to work through um, some of the things that, that our kids are thinking about, and hopefully we gave them some godly advice or, or answered their questions, but one of the ones that really stuck out to me was, how far is too far? And when they ask this question, uh, they ask it in the sense of, how far is too far in regards to sin? Um, how far is too far with my boyfriend or girlfriend? How far is too far with uh, drugs and alcohol? And uh, these, are, these are things that they struggle with. And, uh, and we gave them the answers that we believe the scripture um, entails. How far is too far with your boyfriend or girlfriend? And we told them, you know, if you're asking that question, you've probably already crossed that line, right? That um, you're contemplating sin your conscience is bothering you enough to ask it. <clears throat> we talked to him about how within the context of marriage, uh, sex is an incredibly beautiful thing and a gift from God, but outside of it, it causes pain, heartache, it leaves uh, broken and shattered lives. And they knew that from their own experience. And, and what about the drinking? You know, that's one that comes up all the time. You know. <coughs> Pastor Mike, can I drink? I'm 16 years old. No, you can't. It's illegal for you to do that. But physically, absolutely you can. I mean, you have all the proper physical components to be able to drink alcohol. But to ask that question, how far is too far with drugs or alcohol, is to ask the wrong question. The right question is really, why do I think I need this? Because the scripture says, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Meaning that the only thing that I really need in this life is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And that just kind of opened their eyes. You know, it, it wasn't so much that how far can I wade into sin? It was the paradigm has now shifted. How, how can I honor God with my life? And, and I bring that question up because I think we ask the very same question. How far is too far? But we, we, not necessarily, or we don't necessarily ask it in regards to sin. We ask it in regards to service. When we say, how far is too far when I help my neighbor? How far is too far when I go and reach that guy who's just been mean to me? How far is too far as far as my giving? You know, I find it strangely ironic that over the years I have been asked that question, how far is too far, a multitude of times, and it always has to do with um, how much can I get away with. But I've never one time heard it asked, 
how far can I sacrifice for the Lord? Do you think God would be okay with me giving up everything and going to Uganda? I've never heard anybody say that. I've never heard anybody say, you know what? <clears throat> My neighbor lost his job. I just got a raise. Do you think God would be okay with me giving that money for the raise to him? I've never heard anybody say that. So I would contend that we ask the very same question, but we say the same I can say the same thing about Peter, too. In this passage, Peter is in Joppa and he's praying. He's doing a godly thing. He's meeting with God. And his desire is to meet with God. He wants to know what the will of God is in his life. And then God shows up. And he gives him this vision of the sheep coming down from heaven and it's filled with all of these unclean things. And Peter's first reaction is, no, I can't do that. That's, that's unclean. That's too far. I can't go into those things. And then God responds. And God says, Peter, don't call what don't call this unclean when I've made it clean. I want you to take it eat. He was saying something to Peter. He was preparing Peter's heart to do something that a good Jewish boy would not do. And that's to go reach a Gentile. You see, the Jews would go out of their way to avoid Gentiles better particularly Samaritans. If you were a Samaritan, they would literally walk around the town rather than taking the most direct route because they just didn't want to be defiled by you. And God was challenging Peter's heart. He was saying, I'm about to do something in your day, Peter, that you're not okay with, but I want you to know this is my will. I want you to go to Cornelius. And in your mind, he might be dirty. He might be a sinner. But I want to reach him. I want to save him, and I want to use you. And I wonder this morning, who is it in your life that you've just said, well, that's too far? Maybe you're like the, the girl at camp who just had horrific things happen to them. And maybe God over the last 5, 10, 30 years has been saying, you need to forgive them. Not forget. You need to forgive them. You need to show them the same grace that I showed you. But maybe you've been saying, oh, that's too far, God. And I, I would just challenge you with that. I would say, don't call what is clean, unclean, in the sight of God. Don't reject the call of God on your life when He's clearly placed it in your heart. And the second question that they asked was how do you know when God is calling, calling me or calling you somewhere or to someone? Well, that's, a, that's a legitimate question. You know, because we serve a God that we can't see. You know, we don't have we don't have a graven image that we can go and you know offer a sacrifice to and wait for some priest to come back and say, yeah, this is what the statue said. We don't do that. We worship a God in spirit. And we worship Him in truth. And one of the things that I've heard repeatedly over my ministry is, Pastor, I have never heard the voice of God. And that just breaks my heart when I hear that. Because one of two things is happening. Either you talk so much that you drown them out, or you just don't listen. Remember the scripture that says, <clears throat> we're to be quick to listen, <clears throat> slow to speak, and slow to anger. A lot of us, man, our prayer life is, God, give me this.